On today's show, we'll break down the Leafs regular season schedule and debate whether the captaincy should or should not change hands this summer. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs Center podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. What's going on, Dave? How you feeling on a Wednesday? I'm feeling pretty good. Um, you know, just the craziness is kind of settled. Starting to settle. Starting to settle. We didn't see uh, the the big July second uh, like we did last year. Remember, it was July second when. Max Domi and Tyler Bertuzzi signed. It was that secondary day, I guess, that second day of free agency when those guys became Maple Leafs. So the show was a lot different uh, on uh, on July 3rd of 2024 than it was July 3rd of 2023. But what we did get was a new schedule drop. I don't, I can't recall last year when the schedule dropped, but it feels earlier than usual. Like it just feels like it was just thrown at us as opposed to, oh, it's wait a week, you know, and then when there's nothing going on, we could drop the schedule, give some people to talk about. No, they're just going to throw it and lump it right in with everything else that's going on right now. Uh, it it kind of caught me off guard. I don't know about you. Well, it caught me off guard when they started to announce what the home openers were during free agency. <laughs> Right. Like I don't know if you caught that. I'm like, what are you doing, NHL? Like nobody's worrying about what teams' home openers are right now, and they just started throwing that out there. I don't know. <laughs> I could it's, like, it. it's just it's just so weird because like other leagues, the schedule drop is so important, especially the NFL. I don't know if you've like you've oh, watched. Massive. We've seen so many schedule drops in the show. NFL. It's literally an entire, it's a big show. It's a production. Every team, you know, comes up with these cool ways to announce their schedule. The NHL, no, they just tweet a pic of the skid. Just, 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 here's our schedule. Just, just tells people. Here it is, if you care, if you want to know. The NFL, they do it up right, man. Now, it's different. Like, the NFL is a whole nother beast, and there's only, 18 games, so it doesn't take that long to announce, you know, 18 games as opposed to, or 17 games, whatever it is. No, it's 18 now. Um, 18 weeks, 17 games, actually. Yeah. So it doesn't take weeks, that yeah. long to announce 17 games. And their opponent, you can kind of do little skits, I suppose. Can't quite do that for 82 games. Um, but, yeah, it just kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know. Uh, but let's break this bad boy down. Um, the Maple Leafs uh, – Schedule has, uh, yeah, it's, it's officially released here, and the season will open Wednesday, October 9th, against the Montreal Canadiens. Once again, Leafs and Habs opening up the sked. You like that? Oh, it's tradition. Like you, you I, in my opinion, you have to, you always have to open up with these two teams. I know that sometimes it's been the Senators have gone the, the first game of the year, but I just think Montreal is. Like, like that's that's what you have to do. I, I I remember. I mean, literally, John. Like this. Uh, if you look, this photo behind me for those watching on YouTube. That's from John Tavares' first game against you know, Montreal when he scored his first goal as well oh. as a Leaf. So, like, like th- those were like the memorable games are always. I remember against Montreal in the home opener. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we all remember them to a certain extent here's the uh i uh, can't oh, let me see if i can zoom in here this is the schedule release this is what they show us and it's like here you go this is this is now what's happening this is all the games in red is is away in uh in black is home games let's notice though home opener saturday october 12th first saturday of the year the pittsburgh penguins kyle dubas comes to town for the home opener for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's going to have to sit there and just watch 
like all the festivities, watch all of the players have to skate out. And uh, it's, it's going to be hilarious because you know that TV hockey night are certainly going to be focusing on what's going on with, uh, with, with Kyle Dubas. But before we even get there, actually, I completely missed, missed, uh, went over this, um, skipped over this, but opening night is a back to back. You've got the Montreal Canadiens on the Wednesday, and then you've got Sheldon Keefe and the New Jersey Devils hosting the Maple Leafs on the Thursday. So you've got back-to-back games to start the season. And the second one, you're going into Keefe's house. So you're getting that out of the way right away on the Thursday. So the Thursday, you've got Keefe, uh, and you're going into Jersey. And then on the Saturday, you got to host Kyle Dubas at your home opener. It's like the league just sitting here, and they're like, yeah, let's just get this stuff, like these revenge games out of the way toronto early it's also like why are the Leafs playing three three games in like a five day in like a four day stretch like what what was the nhl's thinking with throwing all the it's not the first time they've done this too like yeah. the Leafs, I, I remember the Leafs have done this in the past as well like i have no problem if you want to give the Leafs like that sheldon key first game early in the year does it have to be the like on a back to back in the second game of the yeah. season? I I don't I like sometimes I just don't get what the schedule makers are trying to do with like these early like these early back to backs. Personally, they don't make a lot of sense to me. It's like actually the Leafs have like two back. I'm looking here, like they have two back to back. Yeah, there's another uh, another back to back like the following week. Yeah, Monday a Monday Tuesday. Right here, Tampa, and then they're in Columbus. So they got to finish off that home stretch, and then they travel down to Columbus overnight, and they've got uh, they've got Columbus after after that one. So um, in total, there are a lot of back to backs. Actually, uh, in total, I think I saw there's what like sixteen back to backs. I think throughout, yeah, sixteen back to backs this year. Um, now, I think what I read was the season is a lot more condensed this see this year than previous because of you know now we've got to include it's not just uh, the the weekend of All Star break you've got the full week now where you've got the uh, the the Nations Tournament the Four Nations Cup so I think that the schedule is a bit more condensed so you are going to have a few more back to backs you're going to have a few more you know, four games in five nights or, or three games in four nights type of deal, four games in six nights kind of thing throughout the season uh, to make sure that they can get that all in. Um, that break for the Maple Leafs, the Four Nations break, it's it's going to be 11 days between games. It's Their break will be from February 9th to the 21st. So they'll have, um, you know, they'll be able to get some time off right ahead of it they'll have that week off as their bye week and then you get into the four nations cup tournament uh, right before that i wonder if um if if players are going to take time off before that actually like are 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 we going to see austin matthews and mitch marner who presumably will be on their country's team are they going to take off to cabo for a week before this tournament or are they going to have to kind of remain in training mode there's going to be like a mini training camp ahead of it will they even get a break like these guys who are selected to the Four Nations Pro Cup tournament, I don't even know. I don't even know what they usually do for the Olympics. Maybe I, I don't personally see it. I think um, I mean they're they're gonna want to keep whatever momentum they have from regular season. Get because I don't even yeah I don't even know how the preparation for the Four Nations is gonna look in terms of like are they gonna have a full camp? Are they gonna have like? there's a lot of things with this four nations tournament that we don't really know. And part of it is, um, you know, how are the players like, is there going to be a training camp? Is there going to be a lot of practice time for these guys? I mean, I'm sure there's going to be practice time, like how much practice time are you giving heading into this tournament? No idea. No clue. If, uh, if they'll get a whole lot of it or not. I mean, you'd think that they, they'll want a little bit of rest. Like a, a couple of games, like they're they're allotted that week off, right? Um, and it is an NHL sanctioned event, the Four Nations Cup. So potentially, like it could be in the CBA that they can't really do anything until like a certain drop dead date. Um, so I, I'll be curious to see what ends up happening there. Uh, the final game of the season comes on April seventeenth. It'll be against the Detroit 
Red Wings, and they'll be uh, I think they'll be on the road for that game. I think I saw. Uh, let me just double check and make sure that that was a road game against the uh, against the Detroit Red Wings. No, it was a home game. Sorry, my apologies. So they finish up the season at home Thursday, April seventeenth against Detroit. Um, so. You know, hopefully uh, they're not battling against Detroit for the final, you know, final wild card spot. It's very possible that that could be a a, a situation, and that game could be quite uh, quite meaningful, quite meaningful uh, for the Maple Leafs at uh, at a certain time. Uh, but all in all, uh, you know, it's 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 a schedule. It is what it is. The Maple Leafs will have to play it. Uh, a couple key dates that I saw. Um, Sheldon Keefe returns to Toronto on January 16th. So Jan 16th, we'll see Sheldon Keefe and the, and the New Jersey Devils roll through towns. So if you want to try and get tickets to Keefe's return and kind of see what that game's going to be all about, should be a fun one. Uh, the Leafs return to St. Louis. So Craig Berube makes his return to St. Louis on November 2nd. And then the Leafs, first time that they'll be in Utah, the Utah Hockey Club will be hosting Toronto on March 10th. So that'll be the first time that the Buds touch down in Utah to play an NHL game. When do they host Utah? Well, let me let me quickly find out. They're at Utah on March 10th, and they host Utah on November 24th. So if you want to watch Utah, you can head down to Scotia Bank and watch them on Sunday, November 24th. That's a that's a bit of a tough sked. Actually, I'm looking at it. they've got Edmonton, Vegas, and Utah. That's a oh then Florida then Tampa. <laughs> That's a five game stretch there in November, the uh, midway to the end of November. That's going to be a tough stretch there. Um, anything that you kind of picked uh, picked apart from this schedule that uh, that you think will be interesting? December and March are going to be tough. Fifteen games yeah. in each of those months for the Leafs. Like fifteen games in a in, in a month is a lot. Like there's a period where, again where they have I think there's four stretches in this schedule where they play three games in like um in like four days or something like that. Like mm-hmm. um so there's gonna be a lot of those like game like stretches where a lot of games will be like kind of condensed and, and that's why you know when you talk about like the disruption about the Olympics, this is why like the league is so they always think about whether they'll always worth the Olympic participation because of what does the schedule. But I mean, first off you go to the Olympics, there's no debate about that, but um, I do think that um, when you look at the schedule, um, it, it's going to be a tough one this year. Like I think they don't like their longest home stand is like four games at home. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty normal, but like that's you know you're you're like you're trying to the NHL is clearly trying to also get a lot of these road trips kind of condensed. Um, you know I think they have two four game road trips, but those are like a long time on the road. Obviously the California trip, like that's like a tough tough one there. But like yeah, as you as you're pulling up the schedule here, like the this gives you a bit of a better visual of what's actually going down. Look at February. They have one home date in February. Now I get it. There's they got eleven days off where they don't have to, to where they just don't play because of the the break. But going into the break, they've got their West Coast Canada trip with Edmonton, Calgary, Seattle, and Van. Then they're on on hiatus for eleven days. They come back. They play one quickie against Carolina, and they're right back on the road: Chicago, Boston, New York. Pittsburgh, and then they, they come back home after Pittsburgh, and right away they play the San Jose Sharks on the second night of a back-to-back, and then back out on the road again, Vegas, Colorado, Utah. They have two home games uh, from, hold on, let me see when in January. Okay, so from January, technically, 30th, all the way until March 17th, they have, or 16th, we'll say, it, they have two home games. That's insane. That's a lot of time spent on the road. Yeah, I, like that's that's something I I like when I talk about like the the schedule kind of being like condensed away. Like it's just like 
they don't have like a lot of the like again i was talking about those home stands like yeah they eventually have a, a pretty decent chunk of home games in march but it's also sandwiched with a lot of road games in between that like you get your home for four game four games then you're like four i think four or five like march, are on the road you have you have six home dates in march you have nine away yeah. date in march like December, December they're home uh, home quite a bit here. December, mm-hmm. January they've got a lot of home games. Um, it looks like November, so it looks like November, December they're kind of early in the season. They're they're at home here, and then they hit the road in the in the back half of the year, which you know isn't great. Obviously for for travel purposes, you, you don't love to see it. Um, you would prefer you wouldn't have to travel as much later on in the season, but. Is what it is when uh, when it comes to the NHL sked can't really fix it. That's kind of how things end up falling into place. And uh, the Maple Leafs, they'll have to make it work. They'll certainly have to make it work. I think we uh, we all can agree that that's going to have to be uh, the case here. Uh, anything else? Any final comments you want to make about the schedule? There are also three afternoon games for the Leafs this season. Oh, which ones? Um, I didn't write down the the, yeah, the I'll, exact... I'll take a quick glance. I'd imagine that one of them will end up being uh, well, there's one November 3rd, it's a five o'clock game against Minnesota that's at home. I'd imagine could that possibly be the Hall of Fame game? No, that could be the Hall of Fame. Oh, it's a Sunday, so it wouldn't be, but maybe that Saturday game against St. Louis or that. There's a couple of games that could be the Hall of Fame game. I don't remember exactly when it is, but they usually have it in, in November at some point. Uh, what you said, afternoon games? There's, there's one on the 23rd at 2 o'clock against the Jets. And then the following Tuesday against the Islanders. December yeah, New Year's, on New Year's yeah. Eve. New Year's Eve, they've got a 1 o'clock, one o'clock game uh, on New Year's Eve. And then they got to play Carolina in the, in the afternoon at some point. No? They've got Pittsburgh March second, Sunday March second at one o'clock. Uh, they've got the Pittsburgh Penguins. Like I don't remember the last time I've seen a Sunday afternoon game for the Leafs. Very, very yeah, different. it is kind of bizarre, but I think it's it's like the it's like a getaway game because then they're back home playing San Jose the the following night. So I think they're kind of doing a bit of a bit of a service for the Maple Leafs to make sure that. You can play the game and then get uh, get back home uh, and, and you know, have a little bit more rest time, I suppose. A bunch of 5 o'clock games, too. What is a 5 o'clock game in Colorado? Oh, that must be local time. That's got to be a local time because Minnesota is the same thing. Sunday at 5 o'clock, probably a local time game as opposed to uh, Eastern. But anyways, so that's the schedule. We'll see what the Maple Leafs can get done. We will find out. Coming up on the other side, we'll take a peek at, uh, you know, some of the discourse around whether or not uh, the Maple Leafs contemplating stripping the sea off John Tavares. We'll dive into that and take a peek at the Leafs development camp roster. And uh, it starts today, actually. Development camp is, is, is underway as we speak. So we'll take a look at that. And the Leafs inking a trio of veterans on July 2nd. So we'll tell you who those players are. And if they have any inclination of them factoring into the main club we'll get into all that more on the other side it's mike to stefano with dave morissuti you're listening to the locked on these podcast part of the locked on podcast network today's episode is brought to you by game time game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of major league baseball which makes getting tickets faster and easier prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch with killer last minute deals all in prices views to receipt and the lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying mlb tickets they've got last minute deals which help you save up to 60 percent off buying last minute for sports comedy theater events Whichever tickets you're looking for, they've got flash deals, they've got zone deals, and the best, they've got the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem the code locked on NHL for $20 off. 
Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Welcome back into the Locked On at Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you here as we are each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. You can find the podcast wherever you stream your audio podcast from. You can also find us up on YouTube. Hit subscribe and get yourself uh, some daily Maple Leafs content all summer long. All right, Dave. What's with this conversation about uh, the captaincy? that I've been hearing so much about over the course of the last 24 hours. We're not even in the middle middle of the summer yet, and people are throwing around, uh, you know, I don't know if I call them accusations, but reports that the Maple Leafs apparently uh, is contemplating stripping the C off John Tavares and giving it to Austin Matthews. What do you make of this whole situation? Uh, it's it's not the Obviously, it's not the first time we've ever heard the talk about giving the captaincy to Austin Matthews and taking it away from John Tavares. Um, so, like, again, I, I didn't, I, I'm not taking this like, oh, this is like such a blasphemous talk. But in my opinion, this is something the least have to address. Like, you don't want to have this whole off season being talking about this. You don't want to have John Tavares thinking, like, is this an actual possibility? I'm sure there's probably maybe have been a conversation between Tavares, Brube, and to living to see if like that's uh oh my god, we're going to doomsday. Yeah, <laughs> um I, I I just don't think it's a it's a situation where I'm uh like I'm not uncomfortable with it because it's not the first I've heard of it, but I'm also just like if you're gonna do it, just do it already. Like if if this is your plan, if this is what you want to do. It's not. It's not like teams haven't done this before. Like m- many teams have gone with, you know, the old guard and bringing it to the new guard earlier. Even with like the captain still around, L.A. Kings did it when they gave it from Dustin Brown to Anze Kopitar. The Sharks took it from. I think it was Thornton, and they gave it to Pavelski. Well, Marlow to Thornton, and then yeah. Thornton to Pavelski. They did it a couple times. Yeah, I think the whole Marlow to Thornton was kind of a shot at Marlow because you know the team hadn't really done. Uh, they're gone to their final goal of being a Stanley Cup team, so they're just like we're going to give it to Jumbo because they thought he, you know, he was more the vocal type of leader. I think that oh, was kind of oh, it, it, that that doesn't ring true with what's happening here in Toronto. Is that? I mean, is Austin Matthews the most vocal player on the team too? Though, if I, I yeah, John Tavares, I'm Definitely not saying more John vocal Tavares. than John Tavares. I mean, we've kind of always said that Morgan Raleigh was the more captain like, the most them. vocal. But if you ask me, which one of the two are more vocal yes. and is more their team, I would say it's, it's Matthews over Tavares. Oh, absolutely, and one signed to a deal after this season, and one's a pending free agent, mm. right? It's, I just don't understand why you would bother with this. Like, I'll be completely honest with you. I, why would you even bother possibly rubbing people the wrong way, ruffling any type of feathers, putting a rift in the locker room, making any awkwardness out of this whole ordeal? Like, Tavares has one more year left. That's it. One more year left to, to as a Maple Leaf. Let him keep the captaincy, and then next year, when he's gone, um, that's when you can exchange the C and and give it to Matthews that that's that's what I think they should do I I don't really understand what the point of stripping it one year out from when he leaves anyway would be just let him keep it he's he's still the boy who came home he's still the guy who sent the Leafs into the second round of the playoffs he's still a good player and a very useful piece for this team it's not like he you know doesn't play for them anymore as he's still gr- a great player for for in a great toronto maple leaf and for all intents and purposes a good ambassador for the team off the ice as well um but i understand the conversation because it's 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 austin's team let it be austin's team and i get that but i don't know i, I just i don't think it you need to be ruffling ruffling any feathers here just just let the year play out as is and Give the captaincy to Austin Matthews when Tavares leaves as a free agent next year. Or you can even just announce this is Tavares is going to be remain the captain. I don't think and... you have to announce it. Why would you have to announce it? You don't have to address it. Just status quo. 
Well, I think if you're if that is going to be the case, just like come out and say it now, so that you don't Why? you just end it. No, like I think if you're no no if Tavares is going to remain the captain, just say it now. Yeah, why though? Like, wh- why would you have to say it? Well, because you want this to be talked about all summer long, and then hey, anytime man. all press is good press, buddy. <laughs> like, I, I have no issue if they keep it the same. Personally, I just think it's you know I think I know that there's a lot of old school thought of the captaincy. It's so it's totally changed nowadays. Like. Uh, again, I, I remember looking back at that Amazon documentary. It wasn't just, they didn't just have the captain talk with, mm-hmm. like they had a leadership group, a bunch of guys, even guys who weren't assistant captains having meetings yeah. with yeah. the coaching staff. It's a whole group of players. So I think that that whole idea of the captaincy has certainly changed. Well, I will say this, and, and maybe this is a reason for why it's being brought up again. Um, that was a different era. Right. That was mm-hmm. Sheldon Keefe and Kyle Dubas. Is Craig Berube going to have, you know, a, a similar, um, you know, way to work through things? Is he going to look at it as a leadership group or does Berube more so rely on his captain to, to get through on things? Right. So it's a different team. It's a different coach. Right. He may have a different style of how he relays messaging to to the group and might rely on the on the captain a little bit. And from that perspective, I could see how maybe that's why the conversation is being brought up. Like perhaps Berube would prefer to pick his own captain as opposed to, you know, being saddled with is not the right word, but, you know, as opposed to the, the guy who was there that was chosen by, well, really Babcock, I guess, but, you know, also Dubis and, and, uh, and Sheldon Keefe, like he represents that era. We're in a completely new era. So, from that perspective, I understand why people are having the conversation and the debate, but I still just think, wait, just wait the year. It's really not going to yeah. be a, a bad thing just to wait, avoid any, any awkwardness in the room. Really? I, that's, that's the way that I would take uh, this whole situation. All right, let's take another break. We'll come back and uh, let's dive into this Leafs development camp uh, roster and, Take a look at the three players that the Maple Leafs signed on July 2nd. Will they or won't they be factors for this team next season? That's all coming up next here on the Locked On Leafs podcast. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you here. And uh, the Leafs development camp has officially, well, it's probably underway, to be honest. It's usually a morning uh, they start the morning. So, uh, you know, as of the time of this recording, 9 a.m. on Wednesday, Leafs Development Camp probably has kicked off or will be kicking off very shortly. Um, I'm excited for it, excited to uh, to see what kind of comes of it. Uh, I always like getting our first look at some of the new rookies that are going to be, uh, you know, in the Maple Leafs organization. Six of the eight draft picks from the 2024 class will be in attendance at Leafs Dev Camp. Uh, including Ben Danford, um, 46 prospects in total will be competing and will be taking part in Lee's development camp. It kicks off today, runs through uh, until July 7th. So uh, anything uh, exciting you about Lee's development camp, anything that you kind of will be keeping an eye on or hoping to, to glean from it, Dave? Well, the goaltenders, I'm very curious about because you've got both the Russian guys, Akhtin Yamov and Petsa. Are going to be there. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen K Weber on the ice at all, right? Since he signed with the team, so he's going to be there. I'm sure he's going to be very noticeable because guys from freak Giant. on skate. <laughs> um, you know, I, it was fun, interesting because like Brandon Lazowski was not tendered a deal; like he his rights were allowed to. He was he was not retained by the team, but he's at development camp. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of curious to see how that's uh, that's happening. Also, Jacob Quillen, who is uh, another one of those off-season signings that we never really got to see much of. So, like, there's there uh, uh, outside of the you know usual suspects of like Easton Cowan, Fraser Minton, and Ben Danford. Like, there's kind of the sprinklings of like guys that notable names that we haven't really seen a lot of. I'm curious to see how curious to see what the development staff has to say about them. 
Yeah, Nikita Gravankin also. Gravankin, Gravyankin. I don't know. His name has changed like 17 times since he's been drafted. Uh, but the the Russian prospect who put up, I think, like 19 goals in the KHL last year as a as a 20 year old. Um, he's come over and he's going to be playing in North America this year, and he's going to be at development camp. Um, are both Pexa and Oktyamov in North America now? Like the fact that they're both in yeah. development camp leads me to believe that they've both come over. Um, I knew that one of them was, I couldn't remember which one, but Pexa I, was Pexa had come over first, right? And now Oktyamov is, is here and, and we'll have an opportunity to uh to play some games uh in, in North America, whether it's with the Marlies or whether it's with. Well, like not, not growlers, not the growlers. <laughs> I, know, I was gonna say the growlers, but no, uh, the, the do the Leafs have an ECHL team right now? Do they gotta they gotta find a new ECHL team? I just completely thought about this. That they don't even have an, an ECHL affiliate yet, or what? Or did I completely miss that? I didn't know. I don't haven't seen any uh I haven't seen any sort of um announcement made on that and like well, that's that's something that uh that'd be what would that be like a brendan shanahan thing like as the president to try and find a, a new echl affiliate yeah yeah well like do they go back to orlando with the solar bears because that was their old that used to be their affiliate before the growlers i think someone else is mm-hmm. now using that team as like an affiliate hmm yeah so i, I don't like, know I'm kind of looking around at like the the ECHL right now. Who like the Leafs can like get in, get into business with? Like, well, I, I guess oh well, they can't. I was gonna say maybe Hamilton because Cops Coliseum's getting a little bit of a, a facelift, but they're kind of uh, well. I don't know if Cops Coliseum's gonna be ready by the time or first Ontario center, whatever the hell it's called now, it's probably not going to be ready at this point. Like, like the, the Hamilton Bulldogs ended up moving to Brantford. So they're the Brantford Bulldogs now. Um, so I, I, I'm curious if, if Hamilton could work out as, as a possible ECHL place. Anyways, besides the point, uh, <laughs> they had something we can look into, uh, at, at a later date. Uh, just something that I, just, I was about to say, Oh yeah, some of these guys going to play for, uh, play for the growlers. No, they're not the growlers folded and are not a team anymore. That's something the Maple Leafs are going to have to figure out. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of prospects that I am excited about. Like I said, grip uh, Nick Moldenauer is going to be in yeah. attendance as well. He was someone who's, you know, one of those secondary prospects who, who's got kind of a bright future that we, we like, uh, like a little bit. So get a chance to, to get, to get a look at him. Like I said, six of the eight draft picks, uh, Johnson, the, the small little wee defenseman from Sweden is among them. So we'll find out if he really is 143 pounds. He's going to have to weigh in. He's people are going to get a, get a look at what this guy uh, looks like on skates. And if he is this little tiny puny little thing, um, yeah, people are going to notice and people are going to, uh, to say something and he'll definitely be, be asked and questioned about it. I would imagine uh, Victor Johansson. That's uh, that's at the least fourth round pick this past season. So he's another kind of interesting player that I'll definitely have, uh, have my eye on. Uh, but yeah, so it starts uh, today runs through until July 7th. So keep an eye on, uh, on Twitter for, for updates and, and what's going on. Uh, and, and I'll be excited to watch some of those development camp, uh, blue versus white games, kind of see how these guys play in game action, uh, elsewhere, uh, with the Maple Leafs, couple other tiny piece of business made on july 2nd they inked a trio of veterans if you'll recall at the end of uh brad true living's media availability on july 1st he said yeah we're speaking with a few veterans and some uh some guys that should be signing here some veteran stuff that are in the in the hopper i would imagine that these three were the players that he was referring to because they were all announced at once uh philip myers cedric pare and dakota mermies all signing one year deals worth the league minimum of seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Myers and Mermies are uh, one one way deal. Cedric Parry, a two way deal. Uh, but I would imagine all three of those players. Definitely Marley's bound. I think this these these are depth ads and more so Marley's ads. And should injuries really start to pile up, that might be when we see 
uh, Dakota Mermies or Philip Myers, but these were definitely more so uh, organizational depth signings, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, we haven't um, we haven't seen um, Philip Myers really amount to much since no. like that. Even that whole fiasco when he joined Tampa, and they we thought either he was going to get bought out, and maybe the Leafs could have considered him. That well, because really... it was a cap surplus. Like you buy yeah. him out, and you got a surplus. Like it, it was a way to buy up more cap space. It just made sense. Okay, Philip Myers, if you're Toronto or if you're Tampa, another team who could use cap space, all right, you trade for him and you buy him out. They traded for him and then just didn't use him. They traded for him yeah. and sent him to the minors. It's like, what? why? What the hell are you doing? It made absolutely no sense. Uh, but if you recall, Philip Myers did spend some time in Toronto with the Marlies uh, a couple of years ago. He, he was he was on loan uh, yeah. for the Marlies. So he kind of comes back now on a full-time basis. Obviously, he enjoyed his time with the organization. Uh, so he'll come back and, and play something. I mean, at one point Myers did feel like he was going to be an NHL prospect when he was with Philadelphia. Um, you know, yeah, that but, big world junior tournament. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He did. So a, a lot of people had high hopes on him, but he's what probably 24, 25 at this point, mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, so probably not going to uh, live up to the expectations that were once placed on him after that uh, strong world junior championship. But should injuries occur, you know, he's a big, big boy, right shot defenseman uh, who could come up and play some some NHL minutes in a pinch. So can Dakota Mermies. Mermies is another guy who they brought in, another defenseman who uh, who's played some NHL games here over the last few seasons, uh, kind of up and down between the, uh, the NHL and the AHL. So Dakota Mermies also another player who will probably spend most of his time putting around in the AHL. I think he was the captain of uh of of um uh what ahl team was he playing for last year uh it would have been the minnesota, minnesota. one oh uh, the iowa the iowa wild yeah he was the captain of the iowa wild last year so he kind of comes in and and you know brings some leadership to uh to the marlies which you know is is a good thing as well so mm -hmm. uh yeah nothing big nothing huge on july 2nd just some uh, tying up some loose ends, I suppose, and bringing in some organizational depth in uh, in these three players. Um, we'll see if if Tree Living has anything else up his sleeve, uh, but things are pretty quiet, pretty quiet right now. I would say. Yeah, and I think maybe because I know they do have to make some room with the roster. We'll see if there's any deals to move out any salary notably like a connor timmons or but i think those ones could just yeah. be also waiver that's a they, they can just work on waivers like tomorrow we can take a look and see what their cap situation's like and and you know whether or not they, they throw guys down on waivers sign dudes to to their rfa deals or what happens we can take more of a deep dive into their cap situation post free agency um but i don't know if they're necessarily need to make a trade i think they just you know, they can just, you know, throw, chuck some dudes down in, in the minors and, and, you know, rid themselves of some cap that way. Uh, all right, buddy. That'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more studio and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Uh, we'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.